Hey everybody, welcome back to my Power Platform YAML tip series. Today we're gonna to be focusing again in on Power Apps and we're gonna be talking about the with function. Specifically, we're gonna with it, with it good. Dun -dun 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 -dun. All right, so with it is not something uh, I should say with the with function is not something specifically that you have to use with YAML snippets. It just provides a better experience for those that are using it. All right, before we get into it, let me just tell you a little bit about me. My name is David Warner. I work at Quisitive and I'm a Microsoft MVP and a Microsoft certified trainer, which basically means I love talking about this stuff a lot. So if you'd like to see more of what I do, you can check out my site at warner.digital or come connect with me on LinkedIn. Let's collaborate. I'm always looking to share ideas, updates, and I'm probably going to share way too many purple and heart emojis. Aww. Yep, that's right. I love the sound effects too. And hey, if you find this video helpful or even mildly entertaining, tap that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments how you're planning to use what you learned. I genuinely love hearing and collaborating with other developers that are putting some of these things into action. And hey, by the way, I run a newsletter where I kind of round out some tips and information around other Microsoft 360 five and power platform news and content and one easy not spammy email so i'll include a link in the chat all right if you're not familiar with yaml snippets and power apps they basically let you copy and reuse entire controls in clean readable code it's super super handy now i go into more detail on how they work in the very first video of this series which i'll link out for you so if you're new to them you might want to check out that first otherwise let's get to the tip uh, let's take a look at some of those features that are available to it, right? What are some of the benefits? Uh, it's centralized control. So it defines values th for things like colors or animation properties uh, kind of in one place. So it makes it easy for those that are using the YAML snippets to apply them. Again, to that second point, easy customization. All those users are able to do it. That centralized location. And then it creates a reusable and a flexible grid system, if you will, or framework, if you will, uh, to make it easier for others to use it. So Really good benefits here. Again, this is just a three that I particularly like. Now, what's the good old demo uh, demo quote we're going to use today? Well, when a snippet comes along, you must with it. Da -na 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 -na. All right, so stick around to the end, and I'll even give you a little bit more of a lyrical snack. You're going to love it. You're going to hate it. You're going to laugh at it no matter what. All right? Okay, so we're going to start out with just basic information in Power App Studio about the with function itself, because I think there's some basic understanding that you kind of want to be aware of that is valuable when you're starting to deal with the with function. And I kind of like to call it a mutant shapeshifter. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's start out by taking a look. So first thing is I've got some basic uh, controls here on my screen. I've got a label with just a simple hard-coded default value of text and I've got a sample image, right? Now what we're going to do is I'm going to go into the with function and I'm going to describe exactly what's happening. So if I were to come into the uh, label here, I'll just expand the formula bar and first I want to go look at with and see, okay, what exactly is it telling us it's used for? First thing is the scope. Essentially what this means scope is what are the records or the values within a record that you're going to be able to then reference later down inside of that formula. And the formula is going to output a value, right? And this is where that mutant shapeshifter functionality comes in, because the value that it outputs is based on the type of data that the formula is, is actually going to be outputting, right? So, okay, so what does that actually mean? What does that look like? I'm going to paste in an example here, and let's do format text, because my pasting is messing it up. And so what I've done is, first thing I've got is my record, just one value in that record. It's a token called app version, and I'm just taking the studio version of the app, right? And then I'm creating a label uh, and I'm appending the app version to it. And so what happens is down in our actual uh, output, we see my text and we see the version. The important part here that I want to show you that makes it a shapeshifter is that when I select my width, uh, which is going to say, hey, what is the, uh, I'm selecting that. And then what down here, it's saying, hey, what is the output type of that particular uh, function, right? So in this case, I'm highlighting it. It's telling me that the output is text. Okay, cool. And that makes sense because I'm essentially taking the uh, text label here and I'm putting the app version and I'm outputting it. Now, what if I were to take an image? Now, sample image, for example, is an actual data type of content that Power App provides you. You can put into little images if you want anywhere and it gives you this little kind of sample image, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the width I've got there so far. Uh, paste it here, format text so it looks better. And I'm still now adding another record. So I got my original value on that record. I've added image info, sample image. I'm taking the label and I'm adding an image info. Well, what does that look like? Well, it because it's trying to output it as text, it's essentially saying, hey, here's what the actual 
text reference value of your image is, and it's kind of pushing us and telling us where it's located in the app, right? Uh, and then it's, of course, adding that prefix label to it. But again, when I highlight this, highlight the width, look at the data type, right? So even though that sample image is a sample image, uh, it's converting it to text. So again, it's taking the image uh, and it's actually making it uh, a text uh, output. Now watch what happens though when I remove the actual label, right? What happens when I remove that label? So let me come in here. So now we're left with just that. I still get the value of it, but what's interesting is now look, because I don't have that text anymore that's kind of the Pre prefix or label in front of the image, it sees as an image type. Okay, so well then why in the world is it outputting text here? Well, because it says, hey, you're putting it in a label. I can't put an image in a label. I'm going to convert it to whatever the text value of that image is. Okay, now let's take this particular width function and let's go put it over into there. We'll put it into the actual image control. Uh, what does that look like? Right, so let me come over here. We'll replace this sample image, uh, and I'll do that. We'll put sample image, and now, of course, when I uh, when I select it, it sees image, and it's referencing it as an image. So now, again, even though over here in the label, it saw it as an image when it was the image alone. When I added text, it saw it as text. When I add it to the image, image alone, it sees it as an image and it outputs it as a sample image. Of course, it doesn't look any different, but let's see how it looks like if I were to then replace the sample image with the text value. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna paste in a uh, URL and let me just format text and get rid of those ugly looking things. And so now this is kind of interesting because what I'm doing is I'm taking this uh, value within the record of the scope of the width and I'm pointing it at a text field, or excuse me, a PNG file that is out on my website. Now by all intended purposes, this is a text value within that record, right? So if I were to go like that and I highlight only that item, look what it is, right? It It's text, it sees it. Um, but now what I'm doing is I'm outputting it here and it sees the output also as text, right? Uh, but because the image is smart enough, the image control is smart enough to say, yeah, that's text, but I also know how to take care of it URLs. It converts it for me. Uh, if I were to take the same thing, the same width now, and go put it into my text label here, so now I'm clicked on the text label, and I'm gonna paste that in here, well, now it just shows me the URL, right? Because it's like, hey, you're in a label. I'm going to show you what that URL is. And it sees it as text. So again, this is like a really mutant shapeshifter. Whatever you actually have as the output type, it's going to try to apply it where it is. But you've noticed that by me having an image that is actually an image control in the app or maybe pointing at like an SVG file or something like that, it will see it as an actual image control right? The output is an image, whereas if it's text, it will see it as text. So that means, <laughs> again, long way of saying this, that the width function is this really cool mutant shapeshifter that allows us to make some adjustments and use it in very creative ways. So now let's go look at another way that we could use it with an SVG file. Okay, so for that, what I'm gonna do is I've got another screen set up here and I've got, let me close this up. I've essentially just got a gallery here. Uh, and this gallery is using a data set, that's fine. Uh, it's actually a data set built in via Dataverse. Uh, we, of course, if we're gonna use it as a snippet, pro tip, if you haven't seen my other demos or videos, it's you know replace that with sample data that's hard-coded, that's gonna be better for the actual YAML snippet. I've got a video I'll link above for you to watch on that. Uh, but the point here is inside of my gallery, I have a SVG file, and that's essentially this frame, right? So all these little Lego pieces that are acting as a frame where it's got some orange and purple coloring. Uh, if I were to go in there and look at that, then we see I've got that SVG value here, right? Now, okay, that's cool and all, but where are all these colors located? Well, that's not very self-explanatory. And if you're if you're not familiar with SVGs, it might be hard to find. So then you're like, well, I think it's purple. Okay, well, all right, cool. I guess that's it. It's using a color down here. Let me just try to change it. Okay, well, that actually worked, you know, but still, it's not a great experience. <laughs> and not everyone's going to know to go do this, right? I created it. I know to go find the actual purple color there and change it to something like green. So you get a Willy Wonka Oompa Loompa feel kind of thing, right? So that's without, right? We're not using a with function there. Uh, this is my without screen, right? Without. Dun -dun 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 -dun. So what if I wanted to use the uh, the with function, though? So I'm going to come in here. Very simple example. Uh, I'm going to come back to this new screen. Same thing, right? Just simply when I come down to my image frame, 
and I come up to my SVG, I'll scroll back up to the top. Now I'm using the width function. So I've got the width here, here's the scope, I'm defining the record, I'm calling it primary brick color, secondary brick color, purple and orange, right? Mm -hmm. So if I were to do a quick look, uh, in here, search for primary brick color, then we see it's being used there. It's being used in a, in a variety of places, right? Now, I don't need to go look for that uh, for if I'm going to be utilizing this YAML snippet or, uh, you know, a SVG snippet of some sort, right? I don't need to go look for that. I just need to understand that, hey, I, I can come here and I can change this to green and now, let me shrink that up. Now I just changed one item, but everything changed. I didn't have to go searching. I've got it referenced in multiple places. So this is one example of being able to utilize width within the scope of, for example, uh, an SVG file uh, where you're providing a different color. Now there's a lot of different ways that you could be doing this. There's a lot of different ways that you could be applying it to other controls, uh, other media types, a variety of um, uh, properties that you could be changing and stuff like that, which I'll, I'll create other videos for in and around animations and stuff like that. But this is just a quick glimpse to show you how when you're creating uh, a specific YAML snippet, and in this case, well, I'll close that up and I'll come back into my Lego sets here. Uh, and let me see here if I come down to here. Yeah. Okay. So he here's a good example. Again, um, I've got the width, right? Purple and orange. Um, and my data set is hard coded, right? So that's valuable because that means when I copy and paste this YAML and I take it over to a brand new app, then it's going to be completely uh, completely complete, right? It's going to look really good because it's not going to look broken or missing data. But the benefit is for those that are using it. Okay, so if I were to take this YAML snippet, right, come to view code, copy code, and I come over to a brand new app and I paste, what we're going to see is a complete example of my gallery. Now, if I'm a brand new user going and pasting in this gallery and going, okay, cool, well, I've got some instructions. I need to replace the items with actual data set, but I at least know what it's supposed to look like. Uh, but if I want to change the frame colors, well, at least now I can come in here and I can say, okay, cool, green, there we go. Now I've got an Oompa Loompa. So as a user consuming these YAML snippets, it's a way better experience. I don't need to worry about going and finding everywhere in an SVG that maybe I'm not familiar with and find the the purple references. Now, of course, if I wanted to come in here and adjust maybe some of these other areas of the SVG, right? Um, I'm going to go locate like, for example, I don't know, maybe that brick right there. And then I'm going to make that purple. I could do that. But then instead of typing in purple, I would put in primary brick color. And there it would inherit whatever I change from there forward at this top level within the width. So super cool, really very useful. I'm going to do a couple more videos on the value of width. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but hopefully this is a demo you found good. All right. I promised you something to laugh at. Here we go. Da -da 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 -da. When a snippet comes along, you must with it. If your context feels too long, you must with it. When the formula goes wrong, you must with it. Da -da 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 -da. Now with it into shape, scope it up, get straight, go forward, move ahead, try to refactor. It's not too late to with it, with it good. Da -da 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 -da. All right. Hopefully you found this valuable and at least something to laugh at. Uh, appreciate the likes and subscribes if you can, and we'll see you in the next one. Before we wrap up, let me show you one more amazing power move. There is a Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community GitHub repo where you can browse, use, and even contribute back to a number of snippets for free. Seriously, free, as in zero dollars, cost you nothing. You absolutely can use them infinitely. And when you contribute back, say, for example, you create your own snippet and give it back to the community, you don't just get those warm, fuzzy feelings. Oh. Although, hey, those are good too, but you can actually earn credly badges like you see here, snippet source or power contributor or community contributor. Now, these are great for your blog, for your resume, for LinkedIn. Show them to your manager, show them to your clients because they prove that you are contributing to the community and you are making a difference for the entire global community. And hey, send it to mom. She might not know what a YAML snippet is, but she'll know you're awesome. The links are here on the screen. I'll include them in the YouTube video description. So please get involved. Check them out.